for he found me If you could see just who I was You'd know that I'm a new creation Praise God I'm covered by the blood Oh, what a change What a change when he washed my sins away What a change What a change when he saved me by his grace I was lost and bound for hell Let's stand and go, Lord, in prayer now. Thank you again, Father. We can come before you here tonight, Lord. I pray, God, that you would move again, Lord. You'd have your way, God. You God, only you can take credit for in this service tonight, God. I pray, Lord, that the Holy Ghost let Jesus be lifted up here again. Lord, you breathe life on the body of Christ tonight, God. Help us, God, to receive what we need here tonight, God. Pray, God, for anointing on everything that's done, Lord, and all the singing, all the worship. All the giving, all the preaching, Lord, that everything be done decently in order that Jesus be lifted up in God. Pray, Lord, that you have your way again, Lord, that you let the Holy Ghost move on this Lord. Pray, God, that you prepare the hearts, God, in the prayer room, God, in the time that we spend with you, Lord. Pray, God, that you work through the line, Lord. Lord, pray for the Lord, Lord, the pastor, God, to touch you, Lord, in the strength of the to lead us tonight, God, to uh, lead us. Hearts in here, God. Oh, God. Pray for everybody that's come together here this evening. Everybody watching online. Lord, you touch us, Lord. You, uh, bless us, God. See you here tonight, God. Let's find what we need, God. Straighten us in our walk. Help us here tonight, God. Lord, I pray for a blessing on everybody here tonight, God. Everybody watching online, God. Pray, God, that those who couldn't make it tonight, God, you touch them, God. You give strength in their bodies so they can come before you. to be back in God's house again this evening after way moved this morning. We've been, been we've been blessed greatly on Sunday mornings. He can bless us again here tonight too. It's good to see Dwayne and Ann back with us. Uh, been missing y'all. Glad that you're here with us tonight. All right. Now there's freedom in and there's freedom to worship. Second Corinthians 3 and 17 says, Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Uh, when the spirit of the Lord moves, we're free to move too. We don't have to sit there in the pew. We don't have to uh, sit there and be quiet. If the Spirit moves you, move with the Spirit. Let that river, uh, river of God flow. Uh, uh, we're going to worship in spirit and truth here this evening as the choir comes.
Praise the Lord, we don't have to fall apart whenever the storm comes. We can dig down to that rock and build on a sure foundation of the Word of God. This time we're going to have Brother Eddie come lead us in our prayer request. Praise the Lord, it's good to be in God's house tonight. Uh, Let's continue to pray for Brother and Sister Ball, uh, Sister Sandra, Sister Sarah, uh, Sister Angela, Sister Betty, Brother Sam, Brother Dean. James Green, Rebecca Harris, uh, Peggy Massey, Joanne Sanders, Peggy Fogelman, uh, Cheryl York, Christine Croft, Olivia Baker, uh, Tammy Batchelor, Tom Otwell, uh, Julia Gillespie, Lenore Manis, Billy Duckworth, Stephen Garner, Francis Freeman, Phil Dixon, David Stickler and his uh, girlfriend Sylvia, uh, Brandy uh, Varner and Linda Sire. Um, Brother Dean had put in requests for his uh, brother Bill Randolph and also for his mother Carmen. Um, And also, uh, let's pray for Sister Juanita from Brother Floyd's Church, uh, Lights for Christ. Um, Her daughter has been diagnosed with with, uh, lung cancer, if I'm correct. Um, And let's just pray for God to heal her and, and also, you know, keep Sister Juanita on your mind. I know it's really uh, weighing on her heavy too. Let's pray for God to just comfort her. Yes. And uh, um, let's continue to pray for Brother Bowling and Brother Shortridge. Uh, uh, Sister Sarah's uh, granddaughter, uh, Brandy Reese, also. All these need healing in their bodies. Um, <clears throat> let's uh, pray for God to give a speedy recovery to Sister Judy uh, and Sister Rose Jones. Uh, let's continue to pray for Sam Lamb, Lawson Ferguson. They need healing and salvation. Um, let's pray for Kevin Stillman, Sister Sarah's children, Amy Simpson, Michaela Reese, Rick Adams, and Arnold Spencer. They need salvation. Uh, let's pray for God to move in Aaron's situation and also in Nathan and Brianna's and uh, Sister Ball's granddaughter Caitlin's situation. And also, Brother Matthew had a turn in request for a co worker of his uh, named Colton that. Um, uh, he's been in a different, was raised in a different belief, a different church, let's say, I guess. And uh, he, he's been talking to him about, you know, about the Lord and stuff. And let's just pray that God will touch his heart and uh, and maybe he'd come to church with Brother Matthew and uh, hear the gospel. Amen. And uh, yes. <clears throat> let's uh, always pray for our youth, Haley Harper. Aaron, Jalen, Selena, and Tyranny. Uh, does anyone else have a prayer request? Brother Benny? Remember Brother Benny's brother Carl. Anyone else? If not, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just love you today, God, and thank you for everything you do, God. Lord, I thank you so much for this.
God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. It's good to have our visitor with us this evening. Good to see you and take your liberty in the Lord. All right. Um, at this time, we're going to save offering and get our ushers to come. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Brother Matthew, you ask the Lord bless time and give him. Faithfulness and giving this summer, ask Brother Matthew and Sister Anna come in here in song. Amen. Let's worship God tonight. Praise the Lord. Even the sparrow has a place to lay its head. So why would I let worry steal my breath? Even the roses you have clothed in brilliant red. Still I'm the one you love more than this. You give me and pull at your command so you can steal my heart with your hand you tell the seasons when it's time for them to turn so I will trust you even when it hurts you give me everything you give me everything I can't stand you carry me when I'm lost you will find me when I'm weak you are mighty you are everything I need you give me everything you give me everything you give me Ah. Uh... 
I can't hear you show me when I can't stand you carry me when I'm lost you will find me when I'm weak you are mighty you are everything I need you give me everything you give me everything you give me has a place to lay its head so why would I let worry steal my breath even the roses you have clothed in brilliant red still I'm the one you love more than this you give me everything you give me and pull at your command so you can steal my heart with your hand you tell the seasons when it's time for them to turn so I will trust you even when it hurts you give me everything you give me everything you give me everything I need you give me everything you give me everything you give me everything I need when I can't see you lead me when I can't hear you show when I can't stand, you carry me. When I'm lost, you will find me. When I'm weak, you are mighty. You are everything I need. You give me everything. You give me everything. You give me The 84th Psalm says, No good thing will you withhold from them that walk uprightly. No, God gave His Son for us. What makes us think He won't put food in our stomachs? Uh, God's given us everything we need and makes sure we have everything we need for every day. This time I'm going to hand serve, serve, pass it, Brother Shelby. Amen. Give God praise tonight. Amen. How many know He supplies every need that you have? That's what the Apostle Paul said to the church at Philippi. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. Heaven's not bankrupt, but if God has to bankrupt heaven, he'll do that to keep his promises of his word to us. So that's why you don't have to get nervous when the economy is bad, when gas prices go up, when it costs more at the grocery store than it has in a long time. The child of God does not have to get nervous. We don't have to be afraid. If you give to God what belongs to him, God's going to supply every need that you have. Can you say amen? 
So while everybody else is falling apart, while everybody else is nervous about this election and what's going to happen this year, the child of God just keeps their focus on Jesus. And everything is going to be taken care of. Can you say amen this evening? It's good to see you back in God's house tonight. I mean, enjoyed that wonderful service this morning. I tell you, the Lord, the Holy Ghost moved in this house this morning. Somebody, Sister Chastity, told me that was a great message. And uh, I didn't get to preach. The Holy Ghost preached this morning. Appreciate the Spirit of the Lord. It's good to have Dwayne and Ann with us tonight. I love them. They're, no, they're not visitors here. And I appreciate both of them. I've known Dwayne since he was a little boy, and I guess I was too. And uh, I want you to give both of them a good hand of appreciation tonight. It's good to, have, good to have our visitor back here, this brother with us. Thank you for being here tonight. Give him a hand of appreciation this evening. Amen, all of you. Thank you for coming out on a Sunday night. It's a joy to come to church. I love Sundays the best because we get to do it two times. We get to come over here in the morning and worship God, get to come back and do it again on Sunday night. We're, we're blessed beyond measure. Amen. The Lord's been faithful to us. I could give each one of you this microphone tonight. You could stand up here and testify the goodness of God. Every one of us here that's saved, you could stand here and, and on into the night to tomorrow wouldn't be enough time to tell of all the great things that God has done for us. Somebody said, well, I'm going through tribulations and trials, but Jesus said, be of good cheer. In this world, you'll have that, but cheer up. I've already overcome this world. Amen. God has been so good. If you've been saved, if you've been saved, if you've been washed by that blood, if you've been redeemed, that is the greatest gift that anybody can receive. To have your name written in the Lamb's book of life and know that if you walk with God, he's going to walk with you. And when that trumpet sounds or you breathe your final breath, you're going to be with the Lord in glory. That's worth everything. That's worth more than anything this world can offer you. I was thinking this week about, and I don't know who it was, somebody that talked about how much money they had and all the wealth that they had. And I thought, that's good. That's, I guess that's all right for them. But the Bible said, what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? And what would a man give in exchange for his soul? We're of value to God. We have to be valuable to the Lord or he wouldn't have sent his son to die for us and pay the price, the ransom that he paid for us. I told you this morning, I'm glad he saw something in me worth redeeming. He could have left me in my sins. I'd be in hell, no, no doubt about it. I'd be in hell or certainly going there very quickly right now. But years ago on a Sunday night in that old building, my grandpa preaching the gospel, I'm glad something got a hold of me. Something changed my life. It was the Lord of glory. Found me where I was in my sins. Came to me there and convicted me and said, if you'll come to me, I'll change your life. Amen. And I'm glad that he did. How about you? Amen. If you have your Bibles, let's stand tonight. Ephesians chapter 5. Amen. Enjoyed all the good singing tonight. Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to begin reading in verse 18 this evening. Remember Brother Julian at their church there in Ainer, at the Ainer Church of God down in South Carolina. They were in a revival this week, Brother Eddie Sullivan. So pray for them. Pray God's will will be done in those meetings. Started this morning and then on Wednesday through Friday morning, I believe, brother, I believe it's Wednesday through Friday, maybe Thursday and Friday morning, uh, brother Daryl Turner's going to be there in the morning doing a, a mid-morning service as well. And I talked to brother Julian via text today, texted me after church and said they had a soul saved this morning. So we ought to rejoice. That's what heaven's doing. They're rejoicing over that one soul that was saved and uh, we rejoice along with heaven. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight. Thank you for the joy of being back in your house this evening. Lord, pray for the next little while, God, that you'll touch this vessel. I can't preach without you, Lord. I pray again you'd touch my voice tonight, God, and help me with my voice. I pray, Lord, that you'll just minister to these hearts and souls. I thank you for this congregation, Lord, each one that's come out this way tonight to be a part of this service. And we're here to exalt you and to worship you. You're worthy of all of it, dear God. I pray, Lord, that you'll touch those that aren't able to be in this house tonight, those that are watching online. Lord, that you'll touch them, God, and help them and bless them. We pray you'll heal those that are sick in their bodies right now, Lord. Uh, send your word and heal, Father. 
I pray, God, you'll save the lost, God. We want to see souls saved and sanctified and baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, made full of the power of God. I pray, Lord, you'll heal sick bodies. Lord, uh, help us in these orders tonight. Let there be a drawing now, God. Uh, hide us behind the cross now, Jesus. And I pray that your word will not return void. That's what you said. It'll accomplish what your will is, God. And Father, we want to praise you and love you and give you glory for it all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody shouted amen. amen. Praise God. Ephesians 5. And we'll begin reading in verse 18, please. The Bible says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Verse 22, there's a, there's a headline above mine in this Bible that says, Marriage is symbolic of the church. Paul said in verse 22, Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. There's nothing worse than a bossy wife. <laughs> Nod your head, husbands. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands. I know women get, up, they get uptight when you start talking about things like that, but that's what he said. Submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Wives, submit to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church gave himself for it. Can you give God one more hand of praise as you're seated tonight? I told you on Wednesday night, you know, we do things in the wrong order in the Pentecostal church. I can't speak for other denominations, but I can for the Pentecostal movement. We do things in the wrong order sometimes. We seek power more than we do purity. We want power with God. But if we seek purity, the power will come. If we seek purity, the power will come. The Bible says to those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. And if you want power with God, walk pure and holy and righteous before the Lord. Amen. I want to preach a little while tonight on this thought, a life filled with the Holy Ghost. A life filled with the Holy Ghost. According to the Word of God, being filled with the Spirit is the beginning of a full life of Christian service. In order for a man or woman to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and we're talking about being filled, we're talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In order for any man or woman, boy or girl, to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, we must first be emptied. There can be no feeling, no, no fullness of the Spirit of God without this emptying. If we're going to be filled with the Spirit, we must confess. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. The Apostle Paul tells us here tonight that the first result uh, of being filled with the Spirit of God uh, is making melody in your heart unto the Lord. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, when you're full of the Spirit of God, uh, there's going to be a song in our hearts. Can you say amen? When we live a life that's filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, we have a secret inner song uh, that only comes from heaven. The Bible said in Romans 14 and 7, uh, 17, the kingdom of God is joy in the Holy Ghost. This is the song that we can sing. It's the Holy Ghost that gives us the song. 
It's the Holy Ghost that causes us to sing the song. It is a spiritual song. I'm not talking about a song that's found on Joy FM. Not a song that's found on a gospel CD or YouTube. Uh, it's not a song that we hear the choir sing. Uh, these are all well and good. I love to hear this choir sing. Uh, I listen to Joy FM quite frequently. Uh, I listen to YouTube gospel songs on there sometimes when I'm up here during the day. Uh, but what I'm preaching about tonight is a spiritual song uh, that's placed in the heart of the believer uh, by the Spirit of God uh, that brings great joy in the life of the Spirit-filled Christian. Uh, can you say amen? I've said this many times. Uh, what we need in the church, one of the things that we need today, uh, we need people that are filled with joy, uh, people that their joy is full, people that their joy is running over. This world's looking for help. Uh, they're looking for answers. Uh, I can tell you, friend, if we always walk around dragging our sword uh, and our shield in the dirt behind us, uh, they have no desire for what we have. Uh, but if they can see the joy of the Lord in us, uh, amen, when our world is falling apart seemingly, uh, but we still got that song and we're still singing uh, the praises unto God, uh, somebody's going to realize, uh, amen, this didn't come from anything on this earth. Uh, this come from a higher power. Uh, this is something divine. Uh, this is not something we learn or worked up. Uh, but it comes from the Holy Ghost uh, that lives inside the child of God. Somebody give him praise tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost here. It is a spiritual song. This song will cause the child of God to sing even in the night hours, because it dispels the gloom and the darkness. In Acts chapter 16, we read of Paul and Silas. They're in a Philippian jail. They've been locked up. They've been abused. They've been chained to a floor. They're bloody. They're beaten. They've got fever in their bodies. But the Bible said in verse 25, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. They were not in a choir somewhere. Uh, they were not in the comfort of a church somewhere. Uh, these men are in prison. They're in pain. They're in stocks. Uh, but yet the Bible said they prayed uh, and they sang praises unto God. It was that spiritual song in their hearts uh, that comes from the Holy Ghost uh, that caused them to lose sight of their surroundings. Uh, even in that terrible place, that terrible condition, uh, they could still lift up their voices uh, and sing praise unto the Lord. Listen to me, friend. Uh, we're in a nice building here tonight. Uh, God's blessed us with padded pews. Uh, we've got the air condition going in here. You ought to say thank God for that. Uh, amen. We're in a comfortable place here, uh, and it doesn't matter where you are in life. Uh, we ought to be able to praise him uh, and glorify him uh, and magnify him. Uh, whether I'm on the mountain or in a low valley, uh, the Holy Ghost inside of me uh, has given me a song that I can sing uh, and lift up and exalt uh, the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, as I begin to praise him, uh, as I begin to exalt him, uh, the darkness begins to lose its gloom uh, and despair uh, and I realize uh, that he is well with my soul. Uh, he still sits on the throne. Uh, I'm still his child. My name's in heaven uh, and I'm on my way there and I ought to be so glad. Somebody Praise him in this house tonight. Uh, hallelujah to God. A life filled with the Holy Ghost uh, is not one of murmurings and complainings and singing the sad songs of our surroundings. Uh, but the Holy Ghost puts a song in our hearts uh, that will open our eyes to the blessings of God's glory and close our eyes to the turmoil and the tribulation of this world. Uh, I believe if Christian people would get full of the Holy Ghost, there'd be less murmuring in the church today. There'd be less complaining in the church today. There'd be more singing. There'd be more shouting. There'd be more worshiping. There'd be more glorifying God. Because we realize it's not always going to be like this. We'd understand through the Spirit of God that the best is still yet to come. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, there's going to come a sound from heaven, a sound of a trumpet and a shout, and the Lord of glory is going to 
to step out on the clouds and call the church to come up hither. And we're going to get up out of this whole world. And we're going to forever and forever be with our Lord. Somebody give him praise in this house tonight. Woo! The best is yet to come. So we can sing through the midnight hours. We can sing through the difficulties. Amen. It's not a song that we make up ourselves. Not something that you write or I write. But it's something deeper inside of us that comes from the Spirit of the Lord. The second result of living a life filled with the Holy Ghost is found in Ephesians 5 and 20. He said, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Being filled with the Spirit uh, is accompanied with a spirit of thanksgiving of all things. Not just a song, uh, but a thankful heart. This is not something that's taught or learned in a Sunday school class. This is not something we can learn at vacation Bible school. This is not something you can teach or learn at a men or women's fellowship meal. But this is a place in Jesus Christ. This is a position in Him through the Holy Ghost. That under the influence of the Spirit, we are aware, keenly aware, that God takes charge of our lives regardless of what happens to us. Under the influence of the Spirit of God, we're able to realize that all of our steps are ordered by the Lord. I'm where I am because God has led me there. And if God brought me to it, as that old song says, God will lead me through it. Amen. If you can stand the pull, God will pull you right through, and you'll make it day after day. When difficult situations come, and they will come, and they do come. God gives us the victory and the power to give thanks for all things. Amen. When this happens, then Romans 8 and 28 becomes a realized reality in the life of the Spirit-filled child of God. Paul said, and we know. How do we know? Because the preacher told us, no, sir. Do we know because of a Sunday school class? No, and we know, we know because the Holy Ghost that lives within us teaches us this truth. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Even though things may seem difficult, even though they're painful at times, we don't see things like everybody else. We don't have to fall apart like that world. We don't have to rely on dope to help us get through one day to the next day to the next day. I don't have to turn something up that's got poison in a bottle to help me survive. Hey man, we're not looking like the world looks. We're walking by faith, not by our sight. Does it matter what it looks like? Does it matter what it sounds like? Does it matter what it feels like? It is the Holy Ghost that will cause me to give him thanks in all places and at all times because I realize that God is working everything for my good. It's all going to be all right if you belong to the Lord of glory. Hallelujah to God. Through the Holy Ghost within us, we're able to give God thanks at all times because we know he's in charge of everything in our life. And he's working everything for our good. The Holy Ghost helps us to give thanks when we're on the valley, in the valley. And the Holy Ghost helps us to give thanks when we're on the mountaintop. The Holy Ghost will cause us to give thanks when we're sick in our bodies. And the Holy Ghost will cause us to give thanks when we got a good report from the doctor. The Holy Ghost will cause us to give thanks uh, when we got extra money left over uh, or we don't have enough to finish out the month. Uh, the Holy Ghost causes us to give thanks uh, when we're happy uh, and when we're sad, uh, when we're smiling uh, and when we're crying. Uh, the Holy Ghost puts something inside of us uh, that causes us to realize, uh, amen, weeping may endure for the night, uh, but joy is going to come in the morning uh, through the power of God. Somebody say amen. The third result 
of a life filled with the Holy Ghost is found in Ephesians 5 and 21 when he said, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. The spirit of submission is not merely submitting ourselves just to God, but is submitting ourselves to one another. This is the victory that can only come through the Holy Ghost. We're all rebellious by nature. We're stubborn by nature. We're selfish by nature. But through that new birth, through that sanctifying power of the blood, through the sanctifying power of the Word and the Spirit of God, through that power of being filled with the Holy Ghost, we are made humble and submissive to one another in the body of Christ. I can tell you that rebellion and pride and selfishness are some of the worst kinds of worldliness in the church. The Bible said rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Amen. To be rebellious, to be stubborn, uh, to be selfish uh, is worldliness in the church. But when we are filled with the Spirit, uh, we are humble and we are submissive. Uh, and this removes all divisions. Uh, this removes jealousies and pride. Uh, this removes all rebellion uh, and contention among the church. Uh, these things can destroy a church. Uh, and one bad apple can ruin the whole bunch. Uh, but the Holy Ghost brings humility humility in the life of the child of God. The Holy Ghost brings submission and unity among the body and that will keep the body healthy and that will keep the body flowing and life flowing through that church of a living God. Ephesians 4 and 3 says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Then the psalmist said in Psalms 133, 1 through 3 Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. When he said for there, that is not a place, but it is a time. Where there is unity, it brings the blessings of God. Where there are schisms in that body, uh, where there are divisions in that body, uh, where there's rebellion and selfishness in that body, uh, amen, there will not be a healthy body. But where there's unity among the people of God, uh, there will be life. A river will flow. Uh, and everything that river touches, uh, it will bring life. It will bring healing. Uh, it will bring deliverance. Uh, and it will bring salvation. Uh, no wonder the devil tries to sow discord among the church of a living God but those that are filled with the Holy Ghost we recognize what it is we humble ourselves and submit ourselves to God and one another and we walk in harmony and we walk in unity and at that time the Lord of glory will pour out his spirit upon that body and it will be healthy for the glory of God Amen this submissive spirit is not just something that belongs to the church service or to the fervor of a revival meeting. Being filled with the Holy Ghost controls every operation of our lives. It is a consistent daily life before God. We all need to be consistent in our walk with God. We need to serve Him daily. I need to be right on Sunday, but I also need to be right on Monday. I need to be right with God on Tuesday and Wednesday. I need to be right with God every day of the week. I need to walk consistent with the Lord, not red hot and then cold, not up and then down, not in and then out, but daily walking with God. It is the Holy Ghost. If you're having a problem being consistent in your relationship with the Lord, I would say to you, get in these orders, get full of the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost will cause you to walk a consistent walk with the Lord each and every day. The Holy Ghost keeps us consistent in our relationship with him. Then the apostle Paul said in verse 22, he said, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands 
as unto the Lord. Verse 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Here's the secret of the wife's subjection of herself unto her husband and the source of the husband's sacrifice of his self or his wife. It is being filled with the Holy Ghost. If it's not right in the home, it'll never be right in the church. Does it matter how well you sing in the choir? Does it matter how well you can teach a class? Uh, how much you shout and all those things? If it's not right in the home, it will never be right in the church. If the home is out of the divine order of God, then the church will be out of the divine order of God. I remember years ago, a man that, you know, I know he was a preacher. And uh, when it was time for him to preach, we'd, we'd give the call, and he'd, before he came up to the podium to preach, uh, I've seen him do it. I'd see him do it. He'd lean over and tell his wife, uh, uh, forgive me, I'm sorry. Uh, the reason he did that, because he hadn't treated her like he should that week. And he thought that by saying that right before he went to the pulpit, uh, that that was going to be all right. I'm telling you what happened when he got up there. Uh, there was nothing there. There was no anointing. There was no power there. It's got to be right in the home uh, before it'll ever be right in the church. You can't just say, I'm sorry, uh, right before you do something for God, uh, but you got to live pure and you got to live righteous uh, and you got to live holy. Uh, it's got to be that way in the home. Uh, it's got to be that way in the world, on the job, at the post office, uh, at Walmart. Uh, it can't just be something we do uh, on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night or a Wednesday night, but I got to walk with God, and if I walk with God, God will anoint what I do, and God will get the glory for it all. Somebody raise your hands and praise Him tonight. That man was wasting his time trying to get up and do anything for God. Because he hadn't lived the right way during that week in his home. Say amen. If you want your marriage to be in God's divine order, you must be filled with the Holy Ghost. This is the solution to every domestic difficulty and every marriage problem. The Holy Ghost is still the best counselor that I know. I said the Holy Ghost is still the best counselor that there is for the child of God. As long as we're filled with the Spirit, as long as we keep on being filled with the Spirit, uh, all difficulties and all problems uh, can be worked out. It is the Holy Ghost that helps us uh, work them out in the right way. Say amen. Every couple who's filled with the Spirit uh, do not need to worry about divorce ever coming uh, in their home. If you want to safeguard your marriage, uh, get full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, if you want to make sure the devil doesn't get an inroad into your home, uh, if you want to keep him out, uh, get full of the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and he'll have no place there. Uh, he'll have no ground there in your home. When you have a husband and a wife, who are both spirit filled they will both submit to God's order in that home and the results will be a spirit filled home and a marriage that will stand the test of time when Matthew and Anna started dating Anna one of her one of her requirements of Matthew is that you have to be baptized with the Holy Ghost before I'm going to date you if we're going to have a relationship Whatever's going to happen down the road, if there's going to be anything there, you have to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And in March of this past year, in the revival meeting, Brother Eddie Sullivan, uh, that young man got baptized with the Holy Ghost in fire. God changed his life dramatically, dramatically changed his life. Listen to me, young girls and young boys that are looking for somebody to date. Listen to me. First of all and foremost, first, foremost you better make sure they're a child of God. You better make sure they're on fire for the Lord. 
You need to make sure that they're seeking God, that they're growing in God. Uh, hey, man, you can't. Uh, listen, God, the devil will send chameleons into the church, uh, and, and they'll be spiritual. I've seen it happen. Uh, come in, uh, a wolf, come in and grab that sheep uh, because that sheep didn't have enough discernment uh, to know that that was not of God. Uh, I've counseled people. You can't be in that relationship uh, because they don't live for the Lord, but they say they do. Uh, but Jesus said you know them uh, by the fruit that they bear. If they don't bear that kind of fruit, uh, you better wait on the Lord to send you the right one uh, and save yourself a lot of pain uh, and a lot of heartache down the road. Can you say amen? Having problems in your home. Having problems in your marriage. If you're having problems in your relationship, get full of the Holy Ghost. Get full of the Spirit of God in God's order. We'll come back into that marriage and peace and harmony. We'll flow from that home. This submission to God in the church and in the home is a result of a life filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen to me, preachers. Wave your hands at me, preachers. If God's going to anoint you, you have to do it by the book. You have to do everything by the book. What I mean by that is this. Uh, hey man, in, in every small detail of it, uh, you got to make sure that it matches up with the Word of God. And if your life matches up with the Word of God, uh, God's going to lay His hand on you. And God's going to touch you. And God's going to use you. Make sure that there's order in your home. Uh, make sure that you treat your wives the right way. Uh, make sure you love that wife uh, as Christ loved the church uh, and gave Himself for it. Somebody ought to say amen to me tonight. Uh, if you want God's favor upon your life, uh, then live for God. Live by the Word of God. Uh, submit yourself to the Lord. Uh, and the the Lord of glory will fill you with this Holy Ghost power and you'll walk different from day to day. We don't live like everybody else lives. When you've got the Holy Ghost, you walk different. You don't tell him, he tells you. You don't direct him, he directs you. You don't control him, he controls you. When you've got the Holy Ghost, you become uh, more keenly aware and more sensitive uh, to your walk with God. When you're full of the Holy Ghost, uh, you're careful what you say. You're careful what you do. Uh, you're careful what your eyes look at, what your ears listen to, uh, what your mouth says, uh, because you don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit uh, of the Lord. Uh, I'm telling you the need of all needs in this hour uh, is for the church uh, to get full of the Holy Ghost, uh, to be emptied out of all that is us uh, and filled with all that is him uh, and walk in that spirit filled life day after day receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost is bound up in three things first of all there must be a conviction of your need for this baptism you have to see your need for this gift I've had people tell me you know I don't need all that oh yes you do you need all of that. Everything on that table that the Lord prepares, we need it. God does not make recommendations for us uh, to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, to be filled with the Spirit. Uh, it's not a recommendation. Uh, it's not for our consideration. It's a commandment from the Lord. We are to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, Every one of us must have a conviction of this, uh, that I need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Second, we must have a desire for what God has to offer. We must get hungry for this gift. If you're not hungry for him, you're not going to receive him. He's not, gonna, he's not just going to force himself on us. The Holy Ghost is a gentleman. He comes in where he's wanted. And when we're hungry for him and our heart's been prepared the right way, God will fill us with the Holy Ghost. God will baptize us with this gift of God. I told you Wednesday night, put food in front of a starving man. You won't have to beg that man to eat. He'll eat because he's hungry. The same thing with the Holy Ghost. I've got to get hungry for him. Hungry for all that God says is mine. Hungry for everything that God says he'll give to me. And I've got to be hungry. And if I get hungry, God will keep the promises of his word to me. Third, there must be a willingness to sacrifice everything for it, no matter the cost. This is where people, this is where they fall short. 
They want everything heaven has to offer. They want the Holy Ghost, uh, but they don't want to give everything up. If you won't give up the world, you're not going to have the Holy Ghost. The Bible said the world cannot receive him. They don't know anything about him. If you're going to have this gift of God, I like what Brother Eddie Sullivan said. He told the Lord, whatever I got to lay down, whatever I got to give up, I'm going to give it up because I want the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Listen to me here tonight. If you get full of the Holy Ghost, it's going to change your life. Your life will never be the same. You're going to walk different than you've ever walked before. Somebody give him a hand of praise tonight. You have to see the need. You have to have a desire. You have to have a conviction for him. And you have to be willing to give up everything to have this blessed Holy Ghost. Then God will fill you with this wonderful gift from heaven. I read this story when J. Wilbur Chapman was in London. He had an opportunity to meet General Booth. General Booth was the founder of the Salvation Army. Am I doing all right? Okay. <laughs> he was the founder of the Salvation Army, who at that time was past 80 years of age. Dr. Chapman listened reverently as the old general spoke of the trials and the conflicts and the victories. Then the American evangelist asked the general if he would disclose his secret for success. He hesitated a second, Dr. Chapman said. And I saw the tears come into his eyes and steal down his cheeks. And then he said, I will tell you the secret. God has had all there was of me. There have been men with greater brains than I, men with greater opportunities. But from the day I got the poor of London on my heart, and a vision of what Jesus Christ could do with the poor of London. I made up my mind that God would have all of William Booth there was. And if there's anything of power in the Salvation Army today, it's because God has all the adoration of my heart, all the power of my will, and all the influence of my life. Dr. Chapman said he went away from that meeting with General Booth knowing that the greatness of a man's power is the measure of surrender. If you're going to have power with God, give God everything in your life. Don't try to hold anything back. Don't try to give him the leftovers. Don't give him the heart or the main. Give him the very best. Give him all that you have. And in return, my friend, God will fill us with the riches of heaven and we'll walk in the power of the Lord. D.L. Moody, sister, come on, get ready to play, please. When D.L. Moody was just starting in the ministry, he heard a preacher make this statement. The world has yet to see what God can do with one man fully surrendered to him. Moody said that night, by God's grace, I'll be that man. God's looking for surrender. God's looking for people that will pay the price that will count the cost and lay everything, lay everything aside to walk with him. The need of this hour is for the church to be full of the power of God. And to have that power of God, the church must be pure and the church must be holy and the church must be righteous. Can you raise your hands and say amen? I've been pastoring a long time now. I told Sister Albright this morning, I believe it was, looking back over the years at this church, I pastored one church before this church. This is our, we've been here 20 years this year. And I said, when I started here at this church, I had hair. A lot of hair. Thick hair. And then here we are today with what's left. I said, it's amazing how fast these years have gone by how quickly time is passing brother dean made mention i believe it was brother dean before the service how we're already we're already in august here sister sharon made mention of it this morning how i said we're just just over four months it'll be christmas time again the lord tarries is coming that doesn't even seem real seem like we just started this year and here we are already in august and and nearly the halfway point of august 
My point is this, time's moving fast and time is running out. That world needs to see a church that's got life in it. People don't need to go to a church where there's death, where it's, where it's, it's just lifeless. There's no river flowing through there. When you leave there, you, 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 you say, Dear God, I didn't get nothing out of that. What was the point of even going? When there's more excitement in the bootleggers and the honky-tonks, uh, something's wrong in the church. Uh, the church ought to be an exciting place to go. Uh, there ought to be life in that place. Uh, the Spirit of God ought to have the liberty to move in that place. Uh, Brother Scott already re read the Scriptures. Uh, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Uh, amen. Uh, to have that, the church must be full of the power of God. Uh, she must be pure and holy and righteous. Uh, down through the years of pastoring, I've counseled people and dealt with people uh, that were supposed to be saved people uh, that were doing things that even sinners won't do. I said they were doing things even sinners won't do. No wonder there's death in the church. No wonder there's no life there. But when the church will come before the Lord and she will submit herself and surrender it all to Jesus Christ, I can tell you the Lord of glory will sanctify her afresh and anew and he will refill her with the Holy Ghost and the power of God and somebody's going to be touched, set something on fire and somebody is going to come and watch it burn. Can you shout amen? Somebody is going to want to come and see what's going on. Everywhere that river flows, life will come. Healing will come. I told Sister Shelton this morning early, I said, I've been so troubled because we hadn't heard of people being saved in the last little while. Does that rob you of sleep? Does that bother you? That souls are lost and going to hell and are not being saved? Does that not do something inside of you? Does that not cause you to be burdened and weighted down? I said, all my preacher friends that I talk to on a regular basis, nobody's saying that right now. We're having people saved at the church. People are getting right with God. I know these are the end times, but there's still souls to be saved. When, when that day's done, we'll be out of here. We won't be here anymore. There's still souls to be saved. Now, I'm telling you, a dead, lifeless, anemic, lethargic church will never reach the lost. It takes life. It takes power. It takes anointing. And that's what the Holy Ghost does. It's the Holy Ghost that anoints it's the Holy Ghost that destroys the yokes. It's the Holy Ghost that convicts. It's the Holy Ghost that draws. It's the Spirit of God that saves and sanctifies. It's the power of God that fills that vessel and there's life there. Listen to me. I got saved in a church where there was power, where there was life. And we need our churches to have that kind of life one more time. We need the glory to fill the house again that sinners are falling conviction and they'll be drawn to an altar of prayer everybody stand please play softly please sister I want to be that man that lives pure and righteous and holy and walks with God I want my faith to be on fire so that I can believe God and trust His Word. If your faith can be shaken, it will be shaken. I said, if your faith can be shaken, it will be shaken. These are trying times. These are difficult days. When I was coming up, you never saw homosexuals and lesbians marching in the streets. You didn't see that. They were not proud of that. They, were, they did that behind closed doors. I don't remember, in high school, I, I never remember anybody. Anybody. There they may have been some there, but we didn't know about it. They didn't let you know about it. Today, they're trying to drive it down our throats. They want you to accept that kind of lifestyle and say, well, well as long as it's love, it's love. But we love what God loves and we hate what God hates. We love the sinner, but we hate the sin. I said, we love the sinner, but we hate the sin. They need Jesus. They need help. They're bound up in sin, just like that drug addict, just like that prostitute, just like that alcoholic. Uh, they need to know that there's a Savior. 
They need to know that Jesus is the answer. They need to know they don't have to be bound up in a life of sin any longer. They need to know that there's a Savior that can break every chain of bondage of sin and let them go free. And the only way they're going to know that is when the church has the life of the Lord Jesus living inside of her through the Spirit of God. When the church is on fire, when there's unity in that body, amen, and life is there, somebody's going to be gotten, somebody's going to know that Jesus he is alive he's not in that grave he's alive we're to live a life filled with the Holy Ghost I preached to you on Wednesday night out of these first part of these scriptures about being filled keep on being filled day after day after day after day it is a discipline but if you do it somebody's going to be helped Somebody's going to see the consistency in your life. The worst testimony that anybody can have is to say, I love the Lord today and tomorrow you're living for the devil again. The worst testimony. There's people that won't go to church because of testimonies like that. So your family, the family get-togethers need to know that what you were last year, you're the same this year. Your co-worker that you've been working with all those years they need to know that what you were when you started working there, that you're still the same today. You're still on fire for Jesus. You're still walking in the Spirit full of the Holy Ghost and the fire of God. Every head bowed and every eye closed tonight. I want to give an invitation first and foremost. And I want to make sure that everybody in this house has an opportunity that if you're not saved, if you're not walking with God where you're supposed to be, if you're doing things that you know is wrong and you want to stop doing it tonight, if there's things that you know is right and you ought to be doing it but you're not doing it and you want to start doing it tonight, you want to be washed by that blood and you need that redemptive work of Christ these altars are open they've been open this entire service saints would you pray tonight if you're lost I don't know your hearts here tonight you do God does if you're not ready for heaven if you're not where you need to be with the Lord I'm giving you an invitation now to come and let the Lord help you right here in these altars tonight. Come and let the Lord help you tonight. Would you come, please? Would you come? How many here by a show of hands have been baptized with the Holy Ghost? Raise up your hands. Let's see them. You've been baptized with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> if you haven't, you can be tonight. You have to be emptied of everything that's not Christ. And what I mean by that is everything that's not pleasing to Him. You've got to be emptied of that. If you're not emptied of that, He's not going to fill you. You have to be emptied. You have to consent to that emptying. Then the Lord will fill you up. When I got saved, it was wonderful. I, I mean, it was wonderful, Brother Oliver. And I remember immediately God began to sanctify. That sanctifying work in me simply separate me from what I was, the old life, the old man I was. He transformed me. That was a wonderful feeling knowing that I'm not doing those things that I did before. God saved me out of that lifestyle, drinking, cussing, carrying on. And I remember going to those orders seeking for the baptism. Lord, I want this gift. I want this Holy Ghost that you gave on the day of Pentecost. Peter said, it's for you. It's for your children, for your children's children. Even them that are far off, that's us. That's every following generation. And I remember those orders they told me, they said, give him praise and thank him for this gift. 
And when he baptized me on that, that, I believe it was a Sunday night as well, just a short time after I got saved, I can tell you I ain't never experienced nothing like that in my life before. And the Holy Ghost began to speak through me. And I was so excited I got up from there. I told Sister Shelton before it hadn't been, if it hadn't been for the Holy Ghost, He's kept us all these years. Some of you testify the same thing. The Holy Ghost has kept you. He's helped you. He's kept you. He's been a comforter to you. He's warned you. He's guided your footsteps. He leads and guides in all truth, Jesus said he would. If you're here and you haven't been baptized with the Holy Ghost, come on down these altars tonight and talk to the Lord and thank him. And praise Him for the promise of the Holy Ghost baptism. If you need to be filled, if you need to be baptized, come on down here. If you've already been baptized with the Holy Ghost, there's some place in your experience with God. Now, I'm only going to ask this one time tonight. The last time I did this, I asked three times. But if you want to be refilled, I'm not giving another order call after this one. Come on down these orders tonight. If you want to be refilled tonight, just refilled, full and running over. <laughs> just do it again, Lord. If I don't want you, just do it again, Lord. <laughs> Woo! Just do it again, Lord. Refill me again with the Holy Ghost. Refill me. Refill me with your spirit again, Lord. Refill me with the Holy Ghost tonight, Lord. If you haven't been baptized, God can baptize you in this house tonight. Let him refill you tonight. Let him refill you good tonight. Come on, let's press in now. Let's don't worry about the time. Don't worry about tomorrow.
With weary hearts and minds We all have this in common We are fighting for our lives If you need a place of refuge His arms are reaching out Go! 
and trouble inside. There is a place where my soul can hide my refuge, my fortress, where I Yeah.